We in the US have an abundance of charging connectors to choose from, where most other puny countries have just one charging standard. There is the Betamax of connectors, Chidemo, the Common People's Connector, CCS, and what many consider to be the epitome of user experience, the connector of what is now called the North American Charging Standard. So with the opening of that connector standard by Tesla, will we see other manufacturers adopting it? And will that make charging better? We spoke to industry insiders and they had some things to say. The thing is, the charging connector formerly known as the Tesla connector, along with the protocol that it uses, is quite simply a very nice piece of engineering. And the user experience, controlled as it is by one company who are in charge of everything from beginning to end, is very good. It's really rare for someone to plug in a Tesla to a supercharger and have a charging problem. I've got in trouble in the past before for rhapsodizing about the Tesla EV charging experience, so I won't do that again now, but coming from approaching a decade of driving an EV, my favorite thing about my Tesla driving experiences so far has down been the charging. It felt really good to sleep. Kate, stop, stop. We, we talked about this in your performance review. You know how this will end if you carry on. But before we get into this too far, for non-engineers out there, we need to break this down a little bit. There's the connector formerly known as Tesla, and there's how the car communicates with the charging station that it's plugged into. To do that, it uses what's called a protocol, which is basically just a language that both the car and the charging station speak. And while Tesla has opened the charging connector up and expressed its intention to get it validated as a standard, it hasn't opened up the charging protocol yet. It instead suggests a different solution. So today we're going to talk about what we know about the North American charging standard as it stands, how other companies might go about adopting it, and what it would mean if they did. First, a little bit of history. Tesla has over the years used a few different connectors across the world. The original Roadster had a proprietary charging connector incapable of rapid charging, although the original charger that came with the Roadster was a 70 amp capable unit, which was pretty darn impressive for the time. And the Roadster could use what later became the standard for other US vehicles, J1772, through an adapter. In Europe, Tesla used a modified version of the Type 2 connector, but the cars spoke their own protocol for supercharging, before Europe settled on the Type 2 stroke CCS combination for its rapid charging standard, at which point European Tesla switched to Type 2 CCS. That's because in Europe, three-phase power is pretty common, and the Type 2 connector nicely accommodates that. J1772, as used in the US, cannot. But in the US and Canada, after the Roadster, Tesla settled on its own new charging connector, the one most North American Tesla drivers are familiar with today, and which has won so many accolades for its user experience. However, with that connector being a proprietary standard, every other automaker in the US has more or less instead settled on CCS leading to a depressing situation where there are a hell of a lot of charging stations that non-Tesla EVs cannot use, and until recently, a lot of CCS charging stations that Teslas could not use. Now, some of you playing along at home may remember that back in 2014, Tesla announced that, quote, all our patents are belong to you. And you might be saying, but other automakers could have used the Tesla charging standard. And technically, you'd be right which is the best sort of right, obviously. Yes, other automakers could have signed on to use Tesla's patents, and in doing so, probably they could have got access to the Tesla plug, but to do so included some caveats that, well, no automaker would ever likely agree to, like not being able to sue Tesla, and also having to share their patents with Tesla. And for automakers already implementing the CCS standard for Europe, it's much easier to effectively throw a different socket on the car with pretty much the same controlling hardware inside it, although there are some differences between CCS in Europe and the US, but they're close enough. 
So in the end, Tesla continued down its path of building superchargers across the US with its proprietary standard, and everyone else went down the more or less international standard path. And that meant that North American Tesla vehicles only had to speak the Tesla communication protocol, Teslish, if you will, and had a North American char... I'm just going to call it NAX from now on, okay? Teslas spoke Teslish and had a NAX connector. Everyone else speaks CCS-ish and has a CCS connector. It's really important to grok that Teslish is completely separate from the connector. The protocol itself is communicated over what's called single wire CAN. Single wire CAN is a super simple system, at least in hardware terms, very cheap to implement and pretty reliable for transmitting small amounts of data across short distances. As you might gather, it can do that across a single wire that's unshielded, a single signal wire. Interestingly, from what we know of it, Teslish, because Teslish remains a proprietary secret, is based on the same protocol as Chademo, which is probably why Tesla was able to release a Chademo adapter fairly quickly, because the cars already speak the language required, more or less. It's just kind of a different dialect. CCS, incidentally, is a much more complicated protocol, which effectively sets up its own little network each time and communicates across that. It can actually communicate about 30 times faster than a single wire can using that system, which would be nice if the whole rest of it wasn't still so very, very complicated. What that's meant for North American market Teslas is that prior to some revision of the Model 3 and Model S hardware, US Tesla vehicles only spoke well, Teslish. With the release of the Model 3 in Europe, which, remember, shipped with a CCS socket, European market Teslas, and also, it seems, eventually, US and Canadian market Teslas became bilingual. The European ones had to speak CCS-ish, but they also needed to speak Teslish. If you're in the US or Canada and you're wondering if your car is bilingual or not, it's fairly easy to find out. If you look at the CCS adapter on the Tesla website and your car is shown as compatible, it speaks CCS-ish. If it needs an upgrade, then it's only able to speak Teslish. Why does this matter? Well, we'll come to that. It is important, but for the moment, we're going to switch tacks and look at what Tesla has released regarding the Tesla connector, or NAX, as it's now known. Tesla has released the physical connector standards and the design. That means the size of the pins, their relationship to other components, the shapes of the moulding, all that jazz is out there for anyone to use to make a connector. Which is great news for, say, Aptera, who want to use the Tesla connector. That means they can approach any manufacturer and say, we want you to make this. Because at the moment, the only source of NAX plugs and sockets is pretty much Tesla. For that to shift is going to take a bit because making moulds is expensive, so component manufacturers are going to want to look at demand before they invest a ton in making the plugs and sockets. So while CCS connectors are available off the shelf, help pop onto AliExpress and you can just order a pile of them if you want, it's going to take an unknown period of time before that's the case for next connectors. It is likely to happen though, because it seems like charging networks are considering adding NACs, particularly in areas that don't have good supercharger coverage, or where there's a lot of Teslas. And the opening of the connector standard does mean that companies do have the option of asking their preferred connector supplier to, well, make them if they're making a big enough order. Whether other auto manufacturers want to adopt NACs is a question that remains very much up in the air, and that's for several reasons. Part of that is down to the fact that the release standards information for NAX is a little thin in some areas. One of those areas is bidirectional power, and bidirectional power is currently flavour of the month for many automakers. I'm going to read you that section to give you an idea, because when I say it's short, it's short. Quote, the North American charging standard is compatible with vehicle-to-X, i.e. vehicle-to-load, vehicle-to-home, vehicle-to-grid power transfer. Future versions of this technical specification will specify the functional requirements and specifications required to achieve vehicle-to-X power transfer. That's basically the standard's equivalent of going, well, there's no reason why it won't work. For manufacturers who've spent the last few years negotiating with CCS's incomplete bidirectional power transfer standard, who've started to build an ecosystem and cars with bidirectional power transfer chargers and home backup systems, 
starting again is unlikely to be popular and alienating their higher paying customers who've bought the most expensive variants of their cars probably not high on their priority list. The other specification concerns that were expressed were about the connector itself. In the world we're entering where a sustained 350 plus kilowatts for charging is coming, while variants of the CCS connector are designed to have liquid cooling, that's a big chunk of why some CCS connectors are so heavy and cumbersome compared to the NAX connector, currently NAX has no facility for liquid cooling. And as anyone who's pulled the connector from a Tesla on a hot sunny day after it's done a period of a sustained charge at its maximum of 250 kilowatts can attest, that connector gets uncomfortably hot. Rumours abounded since the beginning of 2022 that the V3 superchargers would be upgraded to provide 324 kilowatts. However, I can't find any information to indicate that that has actually happened yet. Now there's no reason that anyone I spoke to could identify that Tesla or someone else couldn't redesign the NAX connector to have liquid cooling. Although it does have a fairly tight quote keep out zone specified around it, which could make it challenging to fit liquid cooling in. And doing so would likely result in significant size and weight gain, something that would negatively affect its usability in the same way that adding liquid cooling has for the CCS connector. Excited people being excitable on the internet have pointed out that in the NAX standard a small note indicates that NAX has held a sustained charge of 900 amps at presumably a thousand volts since the press release states that it's capable of one megawatt. But there's no other information provided so it's really difficult to ascertain how reproducible that may be outside of the lab and for how long and at what temperature the connector was at the start because that's important. Why? because the maximum charging power is, per the NAC standard, limited by temperature rise. That is, the internal contact temperature, the temperature of the actual pins, etc., should not exceed 105 degrees C, and the touch surfaces should not exceed ambient temperature plus 25 degrees C. That's about 40-ish degrees Fahrenheit. So how long the NAX plug stroke outlet combination can sustain 900 amps is going to depend on the ambient temperature. And engineers I spoke to indicated that they would expect there to be a bit more information provided to guide them on maximum power output capabilities. Okay, so there are some specification concerns, but they're definitely not insurmountable. And cooling concerns could potentially be misplaced or could be fixed by revising the connector to have liquid cooling. But, and this is where we get to the reasons that we don't, at this channel, at least currently, see this being widely adopted. And that is that Tesla, as things stand, have indicated that for the protocol, manufacturers should use CCS. That is to say, Teslas will speak Tesla and CCS-ish, and other manufacturers would speak CCS-ish and transmit the signals for CCS across the Tesla connector. As one engineer put it, it's basically like putting a CCS adapter on the end of a NAX cable. And sure, that fixes the bulky connector issue, which would be nice. A smaller, lighter, sleeker connector, which has no moving parts, is definitely something that could help those with physical disabilities, for example. It's certainly a more pleasant connector to use. But liquid cooling the cables, which remains necessary at high power transfer rates, is a significant proportion of what makes the cables bulky and difficult to maneuver. And at the end of the day, if other manufacturers switch, what we'll probably see is a dilution of Tesla charging's lovely user experience. Because we'll still have the protocol and interoperability issues that drive a lot of charging problems. That will appear both for legacy manufacturers and for Teslas using other charging stations. That's because all the cars will speak CCS-ish, but each manufacturer effectively speaks that language with a different regional accent. And when you're talking to someone with a strong regional accent or using a strong dialect and you're not used to it, well, misunderstandings can occur. Remember, the reason that Tesla's charging experience is so deliciously Kate, no! deliciously reliable is Tesla's historically had control of the horizontal and the vertical. You are about to participate in a great adventure. 
you are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to... I mean the protocol and the connector. With other manufacturers potentially building both chargers and cars, well, it's all likely to get a little messy. In fact, given Tesla's suggestion to just use CCS with the NAC standard, we'll potentially have people driving older Model S's and Model 3's arriving at NACS equipped charging stations and being unable to charge. A situation which is not going to be ideal for anyone. So then, if it seems unlikely that major automakers will get on the NACS bandwagon, why open the charging standard now? Well, it could be a prudent financial move on the part of Tesla. While the quote-unquote Tesla charging connector would not be eligible for federal funding because it is a proprietary connector, the North American charging standard could potentially be eligible for those tasty federal funds. Whether that will work is unclear and whether that was the true intent I'm not able to suggest. Only time will tell if other manufacturers will choose to go the route of NAX, but at the moment everyone I spoke to seemed pretty hesitant to think they'd make the jump. On that note, we're done with today's video. If you liked it, you know what to do, and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room, link below. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow the links below to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links to our Ko-fi, Bitcoin, and Swag store. And check us out on Mastodon, we have our very own server. Scrolling by, on my right is our list of amazing charged up supporters. And shout outs go to our self driving tier supporters Mike Weeder, Patrick Boyarski, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Muro Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tessa in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C., Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asenta, and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world, thanks to our Starman supporters, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. We'll be back soon with more videos, but until then, keep evolving.